Greetings, pen pals. Continuing our uh, uh, theme from last week where we talked about the um, Pilot Kakuno, which was a entry-level student-grade pen from a major manufacturer, which is Pilot. We're going to do a similar thing this week. So this is a Pelican Twist. This is a student-grade entry-level pen from Pelican. Um, it comes in this retail packaging, this box, which is uh, a nice, just a plain little box. Uh, you basically get the pen itself. Um, and you get a long standard international cartridge. We'll talk about the filling options for this pen in a minute, but that's what it comes with. It doesn't come with a converter or anything like that. Um, nothing particularly notable about the packaging. The only thing I did think was interesting where it, uh, can, it in case you were worried, it's basically saying this pen is suitable for use by the left-handed or right-handed people, which I thought was an interesting uh, uh, note to make. I guess maybe the, the way the, uh, the grip section is made, people might be concerned that it wouldn't work either for either way. Um, so it's a, uh, as you can see, the pen is called the twist and it definitely is a twist. It's got this spiral, but ironically, even though the pen is called the twist, it has a pull off cap. Now, a couple of things. One, the cap isn't the easiest thing to pull off on this. I mean, you gotta put a bit of force into it. Secondly, it's not obvious by looking at the pen which end is the cap. I mean, the cap end and the barrel are only slightly different in size. The cap's only a tiny bit shorter than the barrel. I mean, the barrel does have the word Pelican um, uh, uh, embossed on it, but it's quite subtle, so you'd have to look for that. I mean, obviously, I have the sticker on the barrel, but if you took the sticker off, you really would have no way of knowing which end was was uh, was which just by quickly glancing at it. The uh, ends are different. So the ends on the uh, end of the barrel is um, sort of this type of the, the, the vent hole on the bottom looks like that where it looks, so it's a circle on the top. So if you just kind of remember that, I guess that's fine, but it's not obvious by looking at it. And also it, the pull off is just not the easiest thing in the world. First of all, this is difficult to get a grip on here um, because of this sort of spiral triangle effect. And it's just, um, it's just not the easiest. And you, it kind of has to twist a little bit as it's coming off because of this twisted effect on here. So let's talk about this. This is what's called a reload triangle. So we'll talk about that in a minute, that shape. If that looks familiar, it should. This is the Opus, I'm sorry, not the Opus, the Omas. 360. Um, this is a very high-end Italian-made pen, but its barrel is also in the shape of a reload triangle. Uh, this does not. This is a snap-on cap, and this does not have that spiral effect. This is just a reload triangle, but it's straight. Um, well, let's talk about the reload uh, triangle now for just a moment. All right, what a reload triangle is. So if we put um, if we put uh, this uh, cap down and we just simply trace around it, I think that will really help illustrate um, uh, uh, what's going on here. So imagine you had three circles. So if we can continue the arcs uh, on the ends of these sides, and imagine that you had three uh, circles. I'm going to draw this quite sloppily, but you'll have to use your imagination here. And imagine the center, imagine that you had this sort of actual equilateral triangle here, and you basically have the centers of each of the three circles at each of the vertices of that equilateral triangle. If you then essentially just take the arcs of these circles, that is the relo. Uh, triangle. So that's essentially what uh, what that uh, what that shape uh, basically is. All right, the Pelican Twist is a pretty light pen. weighs in at uh, just uh, 22 grams. It's pretty much it's pretty much all plastic size wise. Here it is compared to a Lamy Safari. Oops, got to pull the camera out a bit. 
Here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. So as you can see, it's pretty much spot on size wise with these pens. It is, however, as you can see, quite a bit um, girthier. Um, can we compare it to some other pens? We certainly can. Okay, here is our Pelican Twist. Uh, and here's our Pilot Kakuno. As you can see, it's bigger in every dimension than the Pilot Kakuno. It's about the same length as the Platinum Little Shooting Star, which is sort of a platinum pen that's sort of in this sort of a marketplace, which is sort of the entry group level, clipless entry level uh, student pen. Um, so it's about the same length as the uh, Platinum Little Shooting Star, but um, again, it's, it's quite a bit girthier than either of these. Um, should we and could we compare it to some other Pelican pens? We can do that as well. Okay, so here it is compared to some Pelicans you may be familiar with. All of these other Pelicans are piston fillers, and obviously this one is cartridge converter, as we, uh, as we said. So this is our Pelican Twist. This is an M200, an M600, an M805, and an M1005. So you can see it's about the same size as the M805, it's bigger by a decent amount than the 600 or the 200. Uh, the 400 is the same size as the 200, by the way. Um, I don't have a 400. Um, and then it's, um, it's only a little bit sm shorter than the M1005. So we're actually still talking about a pretty lengthy uh, pen here. Um, this is a Pelican MK30. This is a pen that's not made anymore. This was sort of a very popular type pen that came out in the mid 60s to compete with say the uh, Lamy 2000 or the um, Mont Blanc 220. And as you can see, it's, um, it's, it's, it's uh, certainly girthier because this is quite a narrow pen, but it is a bit longer than uh, this one as well. Let's do a little nib comparison uh, among the student grade pens. So this is our uh, Pelican Twist. Very similar nib on the Pelican Twist, the Lamy Safari, and the Platinum Little Shooting Star. Has, the Platinum Little Shooting Star has the same nib that's on the Platinum Preppy, the nib units and everything completely interchangeable. The only difference is it has that cute little star stamped on it. Uh, again, Lamy Safari, Pelican um, uh, Twist, and this is our Pilot uh, Kukuno. So that has a slightly different, very Pilot style uh, nib, but all three of these have the similar type of nib, sort of with the straight sides and the very sort of forced triangular looking uh, tines, sort of Lamy style uh, nib, uh, if you if you will. All right, as we said, this is a pull to uncap pen. It should be noted, it does not post, not even close. It really, you can't post it at all, which again, a little surprising for a student grade pen because some kids would lose the cap if it doesn't post. Um, it, again, it has this, uh, this spiral going on here. The spiral even carries on to the grip section. So it is a triangular grip. It's going to enforce that three-point uh, tripod style grip, very much like say, the Lamy Safari does. It does have that twist to it, but that seems very comfortable. It has like the, almost like these little pads where you rest these two fingers here, which to me, which is a very comfortable grip. I could see this really being a good pen for, uh, for students. Um, the grip section is a slightly rubbery kind of plastic. It's, it's quite comfortable and I do like it, but it is a big, thick grip. Definitely you can see something that, um, uh, that you know might be something that uh, would be good for kids. The nib itself is relatively uh, uh, unadorned. It only simply has no branding on it. It just simply has the M4 medium. And of course it has an uninspiring plastic feet. Now in terms of filling, like I said, this came with a long standard international cartridge. It would take longer short standard internationals. Um, converters proposed a little challenge for me. I didn't have a Pelican converter lying around and a lot of the standard international converters I had would not fit. So one of the one thing I did get to fit, but in a very interesting way, was this Lamy converter. That fit just fine. The only problem is um, the handle on the on the converter actually engages in the back of the barrels. So when you screw the barrel on, it actually turns the knob of the converter and ink would come out. So the solution to that is I simply just didn't fill it up quite all the way and I backed the converter out a bit. So that way when I when I screwed it on, um, it wasn't um, it wasn't uh, you know gonna gonna squirt ink out. So I know that's a kind of a a low tech uh, solution, but it does work. Um, but you just have to remember that if you um, 
when you when you refill it just to not quite fill it all the way and then back the handle out and it worked fine with the Lamy with the Lamy uh, converter obviously a Pelican converter would probably work a lot better but I just didn't happen to have one um, that is pretty much like I said the parts of this pen it is a very kind of interesting design with this twist I will say it doesn't need a roll stop obviously because the the, the, between the triangle and the twist, it's not really rolling anywhere. Um, you know, um, interesting, interesting design uh, pen. I do like it, um, like it uh, quite a bit. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure I would want to do this for a long writing section. The grip section is kind of big and chunky, but I can definitely see uh, the appeal of this for the target market that it really was uh, designed for. Um, speaking of design for, pens were designed to write. And I know you want to see this pen write it. I'm going to show you that right now. All right, folks, what we're writing with here is a Pelican twist. And um, this has a steel nib in medium. Um, and this, this writes pretty well. I'd say it's probably about average uh, wetness. Um, it's certainly smooth. Um, it has deep, pretty good flow. No complaints there at all. So definitely writes well, like I said, for the purpose that it was designed for, I think uh, it does a, a good, good job. Definitely a good kids grade pen. Like the only question I would have is a pen, I just think a pen that doesn't post for kids is kind of asking for trouble because the cap could get lost. Um, um, but you know, pretty good, pretty nice. Speaking of nice, it would be really, really, really nice if you folks could please like, comment, share and subscribe that would all be very much appreciated but there you go with this pelican twist nice pen but let's talk about this ink now for a minute shall we all right this ink is monteverde Key Lime Pie. And this is a pretty cool color. I like the color. Um, and uh, here's what the color card for this uh, looks like. So what this um, uh, uh, ink uh, looks like, it's uh, sort of a light, um, a lightish green, uh, quite a light green. Uh, actually, we can compare it to a couple of others. So, for example, here's Twiz here it is compared to, say, uh, Twisby Prairie Green. So it's, it's a bit similar to that in that same sort of genre. Um, another light green that it reminds me a little bit of is Jehoban Vert Pre, sort of in that family as uh, as well. Um, and Ackerman number 28, which, as you all probably heard from other videos, might be my my favorite green of all time. So it's definitely somewhere in uh, that family and pretty, pretty, uh, pretty nice. Um, now, in terms of the accuracy of this color, this is not what actual key lime pie should look like. If you happen to see key lime pie, that's this sort of fluorescent green, that's the sign that it, the key lime pie has been uh, artificially colored. Key lime pie is made from key, the juice of key limes, which are actually not the same as regular limes. It's a, it's a, they're different, they're much smaller. Um, but um, uh, uh, the way it should look, it should be more of a creamy tan color or maybe slightly yellow, but it should not be this fluorescent shade of green. If you see key lime pie that's this fluorescent shade of green, it's sort of like fake and artificially colored and, uh, and all that. So this is not really the color of key lime pie. This is the color of fake key lime pie or what people think key lime pie should uh, look like. Um, 
All right, so um, if you're more interested, there are probably some cooking YouTube channels that can explain that a lot better uh, than, than, uh, than I can. Um, but anyway, it's a very pretty ink. It's a very pretty shade of green. I like it as an ink. It's uh, quite, quite nice. It's actually part of this Monteverde Sweet Life product line, which are all named after different desserts. You got cherry danish, chocolate pudding, ice cookies. I've done a review of some of these. Uh, uh, before, and I'll definitely do some others as we move uh, move forward, but it's a pretty pretty nice ink. That's what it looks like on this Rhodia paper. Let's take a quick look at what it looks like on Tomoe River paper, shall we? All right, like we said, this is Monteverde. Key Lime Pie. Again, pretty nice shade, kind of has a lot of pop to it. It's, it is quite light. So again, depending on um, what your use is, etc., it might not be suitable for uh, every use, but um, it is a nice, nice shade of uh, a shade of green. Um, I think that will just about do it for this video for today. I hope you enjoyed watching it because I sure enjoyed making it. And as always, until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye.